Biden administration is defending Anthony Fauci, even as his role in funding research in Wuhan is exposed and his cover-up unravels. To look at the bigger picture, here's what's emerging. The US funded highly dangerous coronavirus research that was once banned at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. That research involved creating new deadly viruses that never existed before. Intelligence agencies are investigating whether such a virus may have leaked and resulted in a global pandemic. The person who knows more about this research than anyone is the top medical advisor to the president, Anthony Fauci. Back in 2012, when the US was considering banning gain-of-function research, which it later did, Fauci argued that it was important. He even said it was worth the risk of sparking a pandemic. His own words, writing in the American Society for Microbiology in October 2012, Fauci said this, what if that scientist becomes infected with the virus, which leads to an outbreak and ultimately triggers a pandemic? Given the possibility of such a scenario, should the initial experiments have been performed or published in the first place? And what were the processes involved in this decision? He goes on, scientists working in this field might say, as indeed I have said, that the benefits of such experiments and the resulting knowledge outweigh the risks. He also said in this same paper, within the research community, many have expressed concern that important research progress could come to a halt just because of the fear that someone somewhere might attempt to replicate these experiments sloppily. But when the outbreak of the pandemic exploded and the White House was sitting there wondering how it all started, Fauci did not once mention gain-of-function research or the other research activities at the Wuhan laboratory. It was left to others to slowly uncover. Gain-of-function research involves experiments that can increase transmissibility or the virulence of pathogens, of viruses. And that's what was going on in the Wuhan labs. It turns out that even when this worrying research was banned in the US back in 2014, US money was still continuing to flow through to China to fund the same research. And Fauci is the man responsible for this. He was the head of the NIH when the ban on this risky research was lifted in 2017. He did that, he sought that permission in a junior meeting with the Office of Science and Technology Policy failing to mention it to any senior figures in the White House. Mike Pompeo, Matt Pottinger, Robert O'Brien, none of them knew the ban on gain of function had been lifted. Behind the scenes, it seems that Fauci was quite worried about the possibility that US money might have created the virus or gone to the lab that potentially had sparked this pandemic. In the earliest days of the outbreak, he requested an urgent briefing on it. We know this from emails released this week through a BuzzFeed FOI. Just to give one example, on February 1st, this is February 1st, 2020, Fauci emailed a deputy director, Hugh Alkenkloss, and he said, it is essential that we speak this morning. Keep your cell phone on. I have a conference call at 7.45 with the Tsar. Read this paper as well as the email that I will forward you now. You have tasks today that must be done. The paper he attached was by the so-called Batwoman, Shi Zheng Li, and the University of North Carolina's Ralph Barrick. It was extremely controversial research that they'd done in 2015 when they created a highly infectious new virus. And it was done with NIH funding. Hugh replied to Fauci at 11.45. He said, the paper you sent me says the experiments were performed before the gain of function pause, but have since been reviewed and approved by NIH. He went on to say, not sure what this means since Emily is sure that no coronavirus work has gone through the P3 framework. She would try to determine if we have any distant ties to this work abroad. So you can see 
that Fauci is worrying about whether his agency is responsible for funding this type of research in China as early as February 1st, 2020. Now this weekend, I've revealed that the NIH was also funding research being undertaken by Chinese military scientists. American taxpayer dollars were funding research to genetically manipulate coronaviruses with the People's Liberation Army. This particular project also involved the Wuhan Institute of Virology and two American institutions. A decorated military scientist, Zhu Yusen, was involved in this research in late 2019, not long before the pandemic hit. And this same scientist, I've discovered, was then the first to invent a vaccine for COVID-19. He filed a patent application, and you won't believe this date, he filed a patent application for a coronavirus vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine, on February 24, 2020. And it was listed under a People's Liberation Army medical institution. Scientists and State Department officials have told me that it's possible, given this very early time frame, it's possible the Chinese military was working on a vaccine before China admitted there was an outbreak. This is astounding. So what's Fauci's excuse for why he sent money to do this research in China? Well, here's what he said in a little known interview he did just a couple of days ago. This is a sub award from a larger grant that received one of the highest scores from American peer reviewers of research that needed to be done. So you say, why do it in China? You do it in China through a very well-known, highly qualified laboratory. Well, let's hit pause there for a second. Is Fauci serious? A highly qualified laboratory? He needs a history lesson. Firstly, the lab was built with the French government and was meant to be a center of international cooperation. But from the moment it opened, the French were immediately kicked out. They were furious and French intelligence then warned that the lab could be used for bioweapon research and military purposes. And in 2015, Israeli bioweapons expert Danny Shoham did an in-depth analysis of China's research in the field of biological weapons. He specifically named the Wuhan Institute of Virology. It wasn't just the French and the Israelis who were concerned. The US government itself was aware of the extreme risks of this lab through cables sent back from American officials who visited who visited there, that visited the Wuhan Institute of Virology in 2017 and 2018. They were so concerned, they sent back two cables and they warned of the serious lack of trained technicians, the lack of funding, the biosafety concerns, and they also highlighted the type of dangerous coronavirus research that was going on. So Fauci, you're wrong when you say this was a, a well-known, highly qualified laboratory. The opposite is true. Now let's go back to his interview. Now you're absolutely correct that I can't guarantee everything that's going on in the Wuhan lab. We can't do that, but it is our obligation as scientists and public health individuals to study the animal human interface. No Fauci, it is your obligation as a scientist and a public health official to protect our public health by doing coronavirus research in a laboratory where you can guarantee everything that's going on. So it was incumbent upon us to study the animal human interface and to understand what potential these viruses have of infecting humans, which then might damage the United States. That phrase that you just heard Fauci say, the potential these viruses have to infect humans, that describes exactly the type of gain of function research where viruses are genetically altered to see if they can infect humans. And in doing this research, a new virus is created that does infect humans, that can infect humans and could leak from a laboratory to cause a pandemic. Let's go on. Please let me finish. So you don't want to go to Hoboken, New Jersey or to Fairfax, Virginia 
to be studying the bat human interface that might lead to an outbreak. So you go to China. Seriously, you go to China because you don't want to start an outbreak in America? Does this health official not understand how viruses can spread around the world? In China, in labs that are less safe, less secure, where the new deadly viruses can then be used for military purposes and bioweapons research, where military scientists had already advocated for the weaponization of coronaviruses. This is where America's top medical advisor to the president wanted to do the risky coronavirus research. It is unthinkable. When you go to China, you have to understand you have the terms of an award and you say, this is what you can do with the $130,000, $140,000 a year that we're giving you. You get an annual progress report from the lab. And when you look at what was done, there is nothing in there that indicates anything close to creating a virus that has great transmissibility and great pathogenicity in humans. That is what we have done with them. Oh, the annual progress report didn't admit to creating any new viruses. Well, Fauci just needs to look at the research papers that this lab was producing to see the type of risky work they were doing it. How can he be relying on an annual progress report? Did it have the database with all of the Wuhan Institute's viruses that was pulled down right before the pandemic in September 2019 and has never been made public? Did his annual progress report have the live virus isolates that still haven't been disclosed on GenBank? Did it have the details about the secret military research the Wuhan lab was doing as revealed by declassified US intelligence? Of course not. How gullible, how naive, how ill-informed can a, a top health official be to think that a laboratory with strong ties to the Chinese military would send a progress report with all of its virus research. You'd think Fauci would be, on, would be under some sort of pressure over all of this, but he's not. Outside of Fox News, the New York Post, the mainstream media is failing to hold him to account. Not only that, but they're running puff pieces on him and giving him horribly soft interviews. And if you think that's because he handled the pandemic well and we should be grateful, well, actually, that's not the case. I've learned through many people I've spoken to for my book that he advised the president and the White House not to wear masks. He also advocated against the travel ban from China, delaying the decision because Trump was listening to him in January 2020. And now that it's emerged, he funded a laboratory that may have sparked this pandemic. There is no investigation at all. And is the White House concerned about any of this? Mr. President, can you talk confidence to Dr. Fauci? Yes, I'm very confident, Dr. Fauci. <laughs> Since you mentioned Dr. Fauci again, can you imagine any circumstance where President Biden would ever fire him? No. There is no accountability here from an administration that promised more transparency. Fauci is now demanding China hand over the medical records for the laboratory workers who were hospitalized with COVID-19 before the pandemic. Those are the workers from the Wuhan lab. But it's not just China that is covering up information about the origins of the virus. It's United States agencies as well who need to be questioned in public on what they were funding and why. Under Trump, there was a push to have a presidential commission and to force Fauci and others to give evidence in public hearings. And I detail this in my book, What Really Happened in Wuhan. You can order it from Amazon. I explain in the book why the idea was crushed, what went on behind the scenes, and how Trump was talked out of it. Still 16 months on, we need an inquiry, not just into the Wuhan labs, but into the role that people in America and other countries played in funding the research that may have sparked this global pandemic. It is a scandal.
We have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Let us know the videos you like and leave your comment below. We have regular videos. So be sure to hit the red button below.